We live in difficult times. This is Think Tech and it's Corona Watch. I'm Jay Fidel. And joining me is Stephanie Dalton and Winston Welsh. Hi, guys. Hello. Good Hello. morning, Jay. We're going to take a break from our 24 hour cycle of talking about Corona. Instead, this morning, we're going to talk about Corona because we really can't get enough information about Corona. So the first question is, how are you guys feeling about Corona and about yourselves? Everybody OK? Winston? Uh, I am feeling physically OK. You know, I think like everybody else on this planet, we're kind of uh, Corona-ing out a bit, and uh, it's sinking in deeply that we are going to be under lockdown for the next two months minimum. And uh, so that's having an effect socially, psychologically, emotionally, uh, physically, and we're just beginning to explore the ramifications of that. So, Oh, yeah. Uh, well, it's, it, it occupies your entire consciousness 24 by 7. This morning, I went for yep. a walk. Walks are important. All by myself, I went for a walk. And I get to the first intersection, and there's a guy there that I know not well, and he makes some. He make he says hi to me, and you know I'm counting the feet, right? It's, it's it was a good safe six feet. It was probably eight feet, and he said hi. That's all he said. But as he said it, his mouth opened and air came out, and I said, oh my god, I got to check this out. So I started measuring the feet, and then I started measuring the direction of the wind to be sure yep. that when he said hi. You know, the, the little globules, you know, were, were not being blown by the wind in my direction. Um, my wife thinks I'm losing it. Um, but actually, I made this analysis, and I'm, I'm here to say I don't think the wind carried his high in my direction, although I'm not certain of that. Now, is that paranoia? Okay, anyway, all right, no. Stephanie, your turn. How do you feel today? Well, thank you, Joe. Um, um, and I wanted to share that I have been informed by somebody of a study uh, an email that was done in, in elsewhere in, in Korea or uh, maybe China. But um, the fact of the matter is the droplets do sustain their, vi their vital nature for much more than the time we thought. So they're, they're there for more than 30 minutes. And also the droplets go further than the six feet. So it is possible and, the, and they're still viable um, you know, in, in across that space into the greater space of maybe up to 10 to 12. So I saw that study report and expected it to go, quote, viral, unquote, but I haven't heard much more about it. But I just raise it uh, as another uh, alarming uh, piece of evidence that this, this killer virus is... Well, how do you feel? I mean, last, yesterday, Chris Cuomo... Uh said that he uh, that he uh, was testing positive and uh, his brother Andrew um, made a very nice comment about their brotherly relations uh, how do you feel well I, I I have sympathy for them I and I, I hope that things go well I, I he has been diagnosed and that puts you in a different category I'm having flu symptoms which is the pre category and trying to get tested to see if I'm I have actually the the corona, but I did find out in my searching and talking to people yesterday that the regular flu is actually still around and about, and that people are um, having some complications or that makes it more complicated because you've got maybe the regular flu that looks like the the, the corona, but so both of those things are in play, and and, and it goes along with the difficulties we're having and not expanding the testing opportunities. So clearly um, the recommendations are to increase the testing, expand the testing, certainly for that kind of a situation. Well, but let me ask you guys, you know, what is going on here with testing? We've been talking about testing since day one. Josh Green has been pushing on testing. The Department of Health has been resisting that. Trump is all confused about testing. He's confused about everything. Uh, and I don't mean that in a nice way. Um, so, you know, what's going on? Why, why can't I just have a little package all by myself and test to see if I'm pregnant. I mean, to see if I have coronavirus. Maybe they'll tell me both. Uh, but I, and I need to know if I have it. And I need to be able to do this quickly. It should be just like a pregnancy test. Why don't I have that? This is the 21st century. And we know already. And we have all this big pharmaceutical industry that makes billions of dollars with all these things. Why don't we have it? Your turn, Winston. Why don't we have it? 
Well, uh, I think you probably have unfortunately a higher chance of getting coronavirus than getting pregnant in today's uh, world and uh, part of that is Personally, a lack of testing. I, I have to agree with that yeah and if you're if you get pregnant then um, we got other issues to worry about but I, uh, I I'd say we don't where you know I know on here on Oahu you can go to the Queen care which was uh, uh, island urgent care before and they you can drive right up and, and get a test I think you have to call in advance and they come out and they swab you while you're there, they have one in Kapahulu, one maybe in uh, Aqua and some other locations. Um, but it's not, you got to go through some rigmarole to get a test. You got to get a letter from your doctor and and, uh, and other things because I just think that there's probably not enough tests because otherwise, basically, everyone should. Well, sure, be that's what's test. happening. That's what's always happening. We don't have enough test kits. We never did. Yep. And, you know, and then you, you don't have any confidence in CDC. I'm sorry. I don't have any confidence in CDC. Now they're changing their view of masks. We can talk about it later. Um, but, you know, I make joke about the about the pregnancy because because you should be able to have a test in your house that you can administer yourself and know in 15 minutes, if not sooner. You know, when you're pregnant, you know, immediately uh, you should you should know immediately if you have the coronavirus. They've isolated mm -hmm. the genome by months already. Why can't we have a test? Stephanie, do you have an answer? Well, I think the answer is the the, the president is not pushing um, this far enough. And I'm hoping the latest data point that came out from at, from people on experts on TV is that 20 to 50 percent of the people with the with the virus are asymptomatic. So I'm relieved to know that I'm not one of those because no, I'm no, but you see that no, that that, would like that to falls it. right but into my are... point, Stephanie. It yes. falls right into my. Yes. I saw that too. I'm sure Winston saw that. You know, a huge percentage of the people who have the who have the virus are asymptomatic, and yet they can spread it. <laughs> not only are they asymptomatic, but they are asymptomatic apparently through the course of the disease. So they actually mm -hmm. never know. Um, and if, if they don't know, the people around them don't know. Nobody knows. A medical you know, community doesn't know, but, they, but they're spreading and they're shedding and all this. And, you know, that's really deadly. And that's the biggest argument you can possibly make for testing. We need to know who these people are, right, with the test, an yeah. immediate pregnancy type of test, yeah. um, so that we can isolate them so they don't spread. Uh, otherwise, they will, they will spread. So, you know, why don't we have that? I mean, we know this already, studies, it's come out, it's clear. And the whole thing about, the, you know, the, the, the spray and the airborne issue it stays in a room for a while, travels on the wind, whatever it may be. Uh, we need to test if we're going to put this thing down. Um, and I don't, you know, the Defense Production Act, for example, uh, he was going after GM and who knows what else about uh, uh, ventilators. And that's very nice. Ventilators are very important. But we could we could nip this much more in the bud um, if we could test. There is no universal American U.S. test. Korea is way ahead of us, and we need to test now that we found there's this huge number of people who have it asymptomatically. Winston, am I right? Uh, yeah, you are right. But from what I've read, there's a number of tests out there, and they vary in their truthfulness. That they that I've. I've read somewhere that there could be up to 30% false negatives and others that are false positives. So there's more intense tests, but even those can take eight days was the last thing I read to get back to you. So even if you have it, everyone still needs to be on lockdown right now. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you have it or don't have it, but we do need tests out there, especially when you have 50% of the people that were studied in Iceland came out. It was 50% what, what of the people. What did you say, Stephanie? Stephanie, would you step back from the oh. uh, just step back from the camera for a moment? We need a lick, at yeah. least six feet. Yeah, thank you. I'm only kidding. Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, no, actually, twelve, <laughs> ten to twelve. Um, All right, thank you. That, uh, but you know, you know, the thing about, the thing about the, I'm mad the, as hell yeah. about this because I think we have a, a you yeah. know a multi 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 billion dollar pharmaceutical interest industry rather, and he has not applied the Defense Production Act to them. And uh, nobody in this country is making tests. Tests are ubiquitous in Korea and other countries. But in this great nation of ours, you know, it's not so great to be great again. That's my phrase lately. It's not so great to be great again. We, we can't do tests. Um, and let me let me take that a little. And it's really critical if we're going to put this pandemic down to have tests. We have to know. There's no other way to know but a test and, and have bureaucracy, well, you bureaucracy stand in the way that's ridiculous. The other one, and I would like your opinion on this one too, 
is the masks. You know, masks are not rocket science. I mean, I mean, a greeting card, greeting card manufacturers can make masks. Anybody can make a mask. You know, they got all these things where you can make masks at home now out of toilet paper. But there's no, there's no, I'm sorry, there's no toilet paper to make the mask out of. You know, I'm really, I'm mad as hell about this. Why can't this great United States of ours, which yeah. has been made a great again, but it's not so great, uh, can't make a mm -hmm. bunch of masks? We should be able to flood the world with masks, and we're not doing that. We're getting them from Russia. <laughs> Russia. Well, you know, and Jay, China. To, I don't I don't know if this will give you any greater peace, but the experts were saying in response to questions about that and the failure again of administration to make this happen through the, the, the Production Act. But um the, the, the hand washing and the and the physical distancing are the ways that uh, will work to kill this virus. So the the masks uh, can or should be worn when you're outside. Should be worn while you're sick. But they're down the list after hand washing and physical distancing. So the the consensus was that that we are strong in using those strategies even without the mask. Well, but the I, you other know, point Stephanie, you saw what happened yesterday. All of a sudden, the CDC, after a month of telling us that we didn't need masks. We didn't need masks. Now they're telling us we should have masks. And then you come and find the reason they were saying the first thing that we didn't need masks was, was because there weren't enough masks. And that's the way of pacifying the public. What kind of business is that? You know, they're lying to us. I'm sorry, I, I mean that in the nicest possible way. They're lying to us. And now when it's really getting nasty, uh, I, I hate to use that term. Yeah. That's a term that's much too often used in the Rose Garden. Now when it's really getting bad, okay, they tell us that masks would be helpful. I'm really getting confused. Who do I believe? You know, even Fauci is standing there next to Trump. I mean, I, I believe Fauci a lot more than Trump, but who do I really believe? Winston, where do I go? I can't go to social media. I can't, you know, the New York Times maybe, or the Washington Post. There's so few places you get the straight skinny and, and you really have to organize your information so you know which one to believe and you know, you use your critical thinking apparatus to try to figure out how to save yourself. Because the chances of getting it now, because we don't know the, the hidden invisible carriers, chances of getting it are pretty good. And, and you, you know, do you believe the, um, what is it, 100,000 to 240,000? Has Trump told us the truth yet? Uh, so uh, is it more like, you know, you know millions? Uh, I suspect it may very well be millions. What do you think, Winston? Well, and it's like, it's like you said, the CDC was coming out and Anthony Fauci standing there, but he's thinking probably to himself, I have to balance so many things. Like I want to be here and get this information out, but I've got to deal with this man next to me who is saying exactly the opposite of what I need. I know the country doesn't have enough uh, masks. I know that already. So um, how do I, how do we balance all of these competing interests? And so they say, Okay, and maybe, maybe let's just let's just give benefit of the doubt that they didn't think that this was more airborne, and we are getting more information out recently. And I don't think there's been any suppression of this exactly, but that idea that we don't need masks. Asians have been wearing them for decades, and it seems to help over there, both from transmitting and from receiving, but more from transmitting. Um, you got uh, a, a choir in Washington state. I think there were 60 people, they were singing, no one was symptomatic, 45 people got the disease. So when you talked about your neighbor and walking on the street, yeah, that's common sense. So th there's a good article in the Atlantic Monthly says, everyone thinks they're right about masks. It has both points in there. But basically one lady, which I thought was pretty salient advice, she says, just think of people being around people who are smoking. If you would be in a small room and there's smoke, you're gonna Smoke. If you're going to be downwind of smoke, you're going to be breathing in the smoke. If you're going to be within eight feet of someone or coughing at like a smoke plume when they exhale, you're going to be in the smoke. So in the same way, uh, think of it like someone smoking, you just want to avoid smoke. Uh, but Stephanie's right. I know what right. you mean, but I'd like yeah, to offer the thought that if I, had a, if I had to choose a, a, a lung full of uh, 
uh, virus particles in a lung full of somebody else's third party smoke. I, I'd take the smoke anytime. Sorry, that's the way yeah, it is. Yeah, but it's just said. an analogy of where to stay. I know, where I know. To I'm just making fun. Yeah. You know, I, I so, you Stephanie, what are you doing to protect yourself? You know, the thing about it is you can wash your hands. I do. I wash my hands every 10 minutes. I mean, if I, if yeah. I feel the slightest need to wash my hands, I wash my hands. And then I do something a lot of people don't do. I wash my face after I wash my hands because my face may have those particles that drop down into your respiratory system. So it's good to wash your face and it's good to take a shower a couple of times a day and change your clothes, all that stuff. But I don't know if that's working. I have no metric on whether that's working. I could be a secret carrier. That's why we need the tests. So Stephanie, what that's have right. you been doing? Well, that that's what I'm doing. Probably not enough, but I have my Clorox wipe. So I'm also even putting that on my face after I've been to a shop or something like that and always wipe, wipe down everything with my Clorox wipe. But and I'm trying to wear my mask because um, in Italy, 60 doctors are dead. And that was mostly because they didn't have the protective gear. And certainly part of the protective gear is the mask. And of course, they're closer up to the patients. But I think what's what is important about your point and your diatribe is that we have a, coming after this, we have the second wave and there's possibly a third wave. So Fauci's mentioned a little bit about this because if we don't get control of it to the point that we could protect ourselves in the second wave, then the second wave could possibly wipe us out. And I think there are there's much hope in um, pushing, whether well, I don't know how much hope there is, but the testing needs to go not just for the corona, but also the new test that's under development and being used in studies is the test for the antibodies, because they want to know, in addition to the corona uh, victims who have no symptoms, there are those that had no symptoms and then afterwards and did have symptoms, but afterwards they all have antibodies. And there's the test to find out Who's got the antibodies? Okay, so we that we've got, got, got those. But I'd like to move on. Work. I'd like to move on for the lack of time to something else, and sure, it's sure. called su supply line. It's you know, so you're going down to the food store. You don't go too often. You probably should wear a mask when you go, and be careful to clean up when you come home, and, and let the groceries you know sit quietly for a little while, or wash them, and all that. Um, so you know, you got to have food. Got to have food. Got to have electricity. Got to have water. Right? Did I get it all? Uh, well, I, you know, I don't think that uh, medical services, sort of run-of-the-mill medical services, is something we can depend on long term. I have a couple of doctors who I've had, you know, routine, um, you know, appointments with. They they canceled because, and I and I perfectly understand and agree. Uh, they don't want to expose their staff or me or them or anybody. So if it's not essential, no no appointment. But it gets much more serious when you're talking about food, food. And there was an article in the New York Times this morning about how the supply, in fact, there were two of them, uh, how food, it wasn't the Washington Post the matter, um, food, the supply lines of food, we should not assume that, that they're going to continue forever without disruption. Um, this is a great concern because in order to keep, you know, civil order, in order to keep people from not freaking out entirely as the death toll you know, increases daily into hundreds of thousands. We really need to have food. For one thing, it's psychologically helpful because you do compulsive eating and gain weight at home, sitting, watching the tube. <laughs> but for the other thing, you know, <clears throat> you need to have food. Winston, what are we going to do when you go down to Safeway and the shelves are bare? I mean, on essentials, this could happen. And there are people who speculate that it might happen soon. What do you think? I'm not going to go down that route. I think our supply lines are fine right now. There's going to be food coming to the suits. Toilet paper is back. Uh, you know, they may be saying, okay, our kapunas come in the morning. There's going to be food. Of course, nothing will last forever if you, but this isn't a forever situation. Remember, this whole thing about staying indoors right now, it's not that people aren't going to get this thing. From what I've read from the very beginning, we're expecting 140 to 170. Oh, I'm sorry, 40 to 70. Let me, let, me go back, let me go back to the supply lines. There was a big, yeah. uh, a big scene yesterday uh, in the news about some guy who was fired from Amazon over a dispute on uh, coronavirus and staff and protection and masks and PPE for uh, you know the um, the assembly line people in in a big um, in a big facility, a uh, Amazon processing facility. 
And of course, uh, that, that was followed by labor actions in various facilities for Amazon around the country. And if I were Amazon, I'd be concerned. And if I was, um, you know, if I was me, I would be concerned because I happen to rely on Amazon heavily for a lot of things. And they're not just discretionary things, they're things I think I need in our household. Um, and, and there are people in this country who like to kick Amazon in the, in the ankle. It reminds me of uh, AOC back in the day when uh, she was complaining that Amazon should not have a facility in uh, Long Island City, New York, uh, because it was, uh, I don't know, the reasons, uh, the reasons are hard to understand. Um, and now there are people that are kicking Amazon because they're not protecting their assembly workers uh, enough. Um, but bottom line, though, is Amazon goes down. Where are you going to go? Uh, the mom and pops are closed. Uh, the retail is, is in shambles. Uh, if you can't order it by email, and I mean by online, and, and get it and have a reasonable chance of getting it in a reasonable period of time, if Amazon is not functioning anymore, and you know it's not functioning nearly as well as it was, uh, what are we going to do, Stephanie? Uh, I don't know how much you rely on Amazon, but I like your thoughts on, on the supply line of things that Amazon provides. Very concerned about all of that. I think it's an excellent point, and all, all of us should be thinking ahead about how to support the work that's going on. There are these individual unique efforts to get a food out to the, to the Kapuna here in Hawaii, and uh, those are laudable efforts, and uh, people are spending a lot of time on doing that. So whatever models they are developing that will work and that, that can then raise revenue for the people supplying them, that the state needs to be thinking about that. Certainly the governor, the mayor should be promoting all of that work. And, and I think to some degree they are because they're getting they're getting some TV time on, on how it is that they're doing this and, and identifying them and giving them some credit. So that's one, one area that needs to be embellished and pro um, promoted because you're absolutely right jay i think this is a critical this is the next the next point because it's not the problem of actually dying of the corona it, and people dying of the corona which is no laughing or smirking matter it's that then the survivors then what what's left and what do you do and we've well, seen the, the reality that. the reality is the people who staff the supply lines whether it be amazon or uh, food or other critical things. They're people, and they're just like you and me, And uh, except that they're out there, they're working. Uh, we should compliment them for that. They're our heroes that make things continue even under, under the crisis. But you know, if they get sick, or if they get concerned, or for one reason or another, they're, you know, they're, they wind up at home in a, in a shelter in place program or in, mm -hmm. or in quarantine. Um, I mean, it's scary to be on those supply lines. Because they, you know, maybe as the guy complained, maybe they don't have the same, the Amazon guy, uh, they don't have the same protection, right? Uh, or enough protection um, to, uh, to feel good about it. So it's like health workers. If we lose the health workers because they all get sick, you know, our crisis mm -hmm. is that much worse. If we lose our supply lines because, yeah. because the people who staff them get sick or, or need to go home, um, you know, that makes the... You don't, you, do you accept what I have to say, Winston? Okay, they, they are gonna get sick. Half of us are gonna get sick. That's a given, 40, 70% are gonna get sick. The whole point is that we're flattening the curve so that we can take care of the people when they do get sick. So we're getting building up to herd immunity, basically. I mean, remember the British came out a week ago and they said, oh, we're just gonna let everybody get sick and we're gonna build up herd immunity. People said, oh no, we're not gonna do that because it would be devastating. People are gonna get sick. Half of the people are not gonna be symptomatic. For whatever reason, they're not. They're going to develop immunity. Like Stephanie said, we're gonna start taking out their blood plasma people with that. The economy can function with half of the workers. It's probably already functioning with half of the workers. Uh, people that get sick will be replaced in, in, a, in, a, in a reasonable manner. We don't have to worry about everything collapsing now. It is not the zombie apocalypse yet. We have very serious issues to face. And this is one that does need to be addressed. But as we find that people um, are not all falling very ill of this, and they're just becoming, uh, I guess, zero converting, but without uh, real detrimental effects, we're going to see that we are building herd immunities. We're going to be getting vaccines. It, it will happen in time so that we won't be facing these. Well, that, that loops back. That loops back to the point we were discussing uh, at the beginning of the show, namely that you have a lot of people out there who have it 
but are asymptomatic. And asymptomatic yeah. to the point where the disease runs its course. They don't know about it. They're not much affected by it, although they're shedding virus all over the place. Those people are part of the herd immunity process. So if you have, yeah. I don't know what the percentage is, say 60% of the people uh, in the world uh, somehow get through this process. Some of them die. Some of them, you know, manage to, um, you know, go to the hospital and come back again. It's not so easy. Um, then, you know, then they could reach herd immunity. But and, and, and this is this may explain the mysterious reduction of the Spanish flu back in the day and other and other such uh, other such epidemics. Mm. But last question for us, because we don't have unlimited time. Um, that, that's, that's kind of we don't have unlimited time. None of us have unlimited time. None of us have unlimited time. Uh, mm. So my, the question is, you know, we have various information coming to us about when this is all going to cool off. So, you know, uh, I've heard it, you know, from Easter, that's ridiculous, uh, to a couple months maybe, or as much as four months, heard, you know, June, July, August, September. I mean, there are so many opinions, you can shake a stick at it. Um, and, you know, the, the government is really not giving me any confidence that it is, it is at a specific time or even period of time, a range of dates. But I'd like to know how you guys have integrated all the information they've thrown at us um, you know, as to when this is going to cool off, when we can have a reasonable expectation of going going outside again uh, without a mask and going about our lives. So, Stephanie, what what when you shake it and bake it, what's your feeling about that? I think we you you raise all the challenges that everybody is going to grapple with. If not now, they will be. And unless the administration can turn itself around. Oh, or we get a new one that will uh, be responsive to these these d difficulties, we are in for a pretty rough time individually. So, um, so I understand Two months, this is four months, six months, eight yeah, months. Give, and it's also are you not willing to give me a number. I'm saying, well, I'm hearing like next month, next year, June, we may get somewhere back to getting our feet on the, getting some traction on this thing. But until then, because we have guaranteed a second wave, guaranteed, and then there's a possible third, but that depends on how good we are now and how much better we've gotten by the second. So the big frustration is, of course, this majestic country with all of its talent has not stepped up to the plate or can't yeah, step well, up as to I the say, plate. It's, a, it's, not so, it's not so great to be great again, you know what I mean? So Winston, uh, <laughs> give me give me a number. Okay, University of Washington came out with their study. You can go state by state, very interesting tool. Of course, it's very conservative or maybe liberal, I guess, I, I, I don't know, in their interpretations. This is where you heard to 240,000. You can go by state. They say Hawaii is going to peak at the end of April and that we will peak with a certain number of deaths and that by the mid mid June, we should be down to about one death per day again. This is the first wave. I think this thing is with us for a year and a half, a couple years, and there will be different waves coming. So like Stephanie said, this is the first wave. It's here, it's with us. We just have to deal the, our best way that we can to cope with it. Keep sharing a lot of aloha with people, share aloha with yourself, um, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, uh, all and always take care of yourself so that you can take care of others when the need arises. Well, what I hear you guys one. saying, and I, let me throw this at you, what I hear you guys saying is, okay, it's going to be roughly 18 months before we can feel comfortable. And I think baked into that answer, it's going to be 18 months before we have a, a vaccine, which is what they said at the beginning. And I, I, you know, I would tend to agree with that. I mean, maybe it's earlier, but that'll, that'll be the miracle if it's earlier. Mostly it'll be 18 months. And the question is, um, you know, until there is a vaccine, it seems to me uh, that as a personal matter, uh, we'll want to have that um you know, quick test at home, rabbit's foot kind of testing. Um, will the 15 minute testing at home? We'll want to have masks. Everybody with lots of masks, um, and we we'll want to and we we'll want to stay out of crowds um, and maybe even restaurants because we oh, don't want to get sick. And so we're going to be uh, in a limited lifestyle. We we'll call it that, uh, just as now, or maybe a little modified uh, for what another year and change. That's I think that's all very reasonable uh, expectation, but it may change in the next seven days, you guys. And so I'm so excited to tell you that we're going to do this show again next Wednesday 
okay, at 12 o'clock. And, and we're going to explore the, well, the, not the same questions, but the questions that arise in the meantime. What do you think, Stephanie? Well, I, I'm, I'm thinking it's exciting and it's I, hopefully the service to our audience that we're trying to make it be. And I think uh, on the state of the state of Hawaii, we're going to have uh, some consideration for small business owners and especially the dental community, which I didn't always oh, consider. Yes, yes. A small business owner. Very so, important point. That's a new, and that's a new part of their their lives that they're finding out about how important that category is and what is coming out of the administration to help them Absolutely. and the layers of that and the dis Absolutely. the unemployment and the people that are in, are suffering after uh, being in such a secure industry and as as many of the small businesses. And Winston, what's top of mind for you going forward into the next week of this great adventure of ours? Oh boy, it's going to be. I think uh, Donald Trump was right. In this case, it's going to be a grim couple of weeks. It's going to be a grim month. And so we need to kind of steel ourselves and just uh, limit your exposure to social media, um, to uh, all kinds of media, actually, uh, and just to the amount that you can take in that's not going to harm you because you're probably not going to change a lot. If you don't already know what to do, figure it out and share that with people and then otherwise Find something that you love doing, whether it's reading or working in your garden or walking your dog. So, um, and calling people you love. Uh, so just yeah, that garden. Oh, I can live together. Garden. I sure agree. Yeah, for me, for me, it has turned out to be Andre Segovia. I, I pull him up on my Amazon Music, and I listen to him play his songs, and it comforts me. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie Dalton. Uh, and Winston Welsh, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, it is, a, it, as you said, Winston, it's a great contribution. And uh, let's do it again. Let's do it every every Wednesday at noon. Thank you so much. Aloha.